thou shalt fertilize. Hey, what's happening, plant people? My name is Gerard. This channel is Gerard's Horticulture Culture. I'm talking basically about plant care, plant everything, indoor plants mainly. I'm working on the outdoors, but right now we're mostly we're talking about the indoor plants and what's going on with them. <sighs> it's been a season, a great year, even though it's ups and downs. The plants, the plant journey is still popping with me. Um, it balances me out. I, I just can't really uh, explain it to you, but it balances the ups and the downs, the winters and the the winters, I would say, of life. Um, so I strongly suggest you guys pick up a few plants because, like I said, it, it balances me. Maybe it could help balance you. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about what I've learned about fertilizing plants, and um, it's it's given me some good success. I um, I'm, I've, I haven't kept every plant that I've had alive, but I got some big plants. I got um, like I got my monsteras popping. I got the uh, silver sword, the statum. It's growing like crazy, along with all the other plants in my care. So one key thing that I provide to them, and I suggest you pick up on it if you haven't started, is uh, fertilizing. You need to fertilize your plants. You gotta feed them. You have to. You just have to. Like I said in the beginning, you gotta you gotta give them that rhythm in the soil that they had when they first, from where, wherever their you know origin or, or where they're from. So if they're from Asia, you gotta provide Asian soil. If, it's, if they're from Africa, you gotta get that living, all those nutrients in the African soil, wherever you're at. And in South America, you gotta do the same. It has to start with one, the lighting. Of course, that's it's, it's a couple parts of it. The soil and the fertilizing is another thing that you have to bring to the table when you're taking care of your plants. Now in the description below, I list all the fertilizers that I talk about on this video. So if you wanted to pick them up on Amazon, I left links for you in the description below. I just started the Amazon affiliate program. I appreciate your support with also clicking the like and subscribe button and also buying from the links because that helps fertilize my channel and helps bring you what you see right now to you. So I appreciate your support. Also, I'm on Instagram at Gerard underscore horticulture underscore culture. Now, let's talk about fertilization. Fertilization. So, when you get your plant from the nursery, from mail, I, 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 well, from another person's house, if you got it shipped in the mail and you got, you know, you just ordered it online or whatever. So much Your aerobics in here, so many activities. You're taking it from one environment and putting it into another one. Now it's not like um, a pair of shoes or anything like that. Plants are very sensitive and they, they need, they have certain needs. Now, what you have to really think about, or what, what I've learned is that you have to acclimate them to your house. That acclimation period is usually what I do is I, um, I don't even put it, if I get a new plant, I don't put it with my general population of plants. I quarantine it because of pests that might be you know, hiding where I can't see it. So I quarantine it for about a week. So I don't put it with my general population of plants and um, the other thing that I don't do is I don't fertilize for at least, I would say, 8 to 12 months. I usually just kind of wait a year just to see what's going on, and then I start my fertilizing schedule. And once again, I'm just a hobbyist. This is just the stuff that I do that works for me. Obviously, everybody's different, but this is just stuff that I've researched and found that works for me. Now I'm going to go like a little bit in depth and school you a little bit about fertilizer. What is fertilizer? What do you what's in these bottles? What's in these sticks? What's in this these these little granule balls that they add to the soil when you buy them? Usually it's nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. 
the best way that helps me remember what these nit what nitrogen does, what potassium does, and what phosphorus does is I actually saw something online and it was very helpful and I kind of got it. They say nitrogen points I, I it has a point going up, so it's for everything above the soil. So nitrogen is key for larger foliage and bigger leaves. So nitrogen helps with the growth up top there and helps the plant collect a lot of light because it just gives it more mass. The phosphorus, I'm sorry, the potassium is for what's under the soil. So I usually think of down when I'm thinking the P and the N I'm thinking up, but the P is for potassium and that's for below the soil and that helps with root growth root promotion to help the plant stabilize itself and also helps with other things but primarily i like i said i think of down below the soil so mostly root growth the phosphorus is for all around growth it hits the upper and the lower so the nitrogen is for up the potassium is for down and the k the phosphorus is for all around. So up, down, all around should be a song. Up, down, all around. Up, down, all around. You gotta make it fun sometimes. That's, that's, that's what it's all about. That's the gist about what is nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus and what it does. Now number two, there's a difference. So those nitrogen and potassium and phosphorus numbers or letters also come with numbers and that's the percentage that the fertilizer that you bought has inside of it i generally use natural fertilizers natural i don't use synthetic i just heard too many things about it and it also has a potential to burn your plants because mostly synthetic fertilizers are concentrated. They offer a high dose of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. So with your high doses, you have a high chance of burning your plant. Natural fertilizers that I use are usually low doses of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. They're usually like a 1-2-1 one, one, or a 2-1-1 two, one, one, or a 2-2-2 two, 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 or a 1-1-1 one, 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 or a 0.5, whatever. You get the gist. They're always low. Now they're low. The only downside to low dose fertilizers is that you kind of have to keep fertilizing it with your watering so you're using it a lot. So you may go through a lot of fertilizing through the growing season, but that's the only downside. So I usually water and feed my plants at the same time during growing season. Growing season is spring, summer, fall, winter. I don't fertilize. I even though my plants still grow, I just back off of the fertilizing because the temperatures are lower, the humidity is dry, the, the air is cooler. It's just not the same for plants that are in tropical zones that have growing seasons all year round because they're in the tropics. The other reason why I like natural fertilizers and synthetic fertilizers can't offer um, the bacteria and the fungi that the plant needs to have that symbiosis relationship with the soil. Some of your synthetics, I, I don't know, I don't know if any are out there that have like bacteria and fungus in them. Usually, uh, in the wild, like I said, you have to bring the same the same type of environment to your house from you know that that Asian environment. You got to bring that African environment, that South American environment to your house in a pot. And, and sometimes the whatever is in the soil, the soil is living in those areas. So if your soil is not living in that area, that's going to cause your plant to kind of get stressed out because it's not it's, it's just not used to having this whole different environment. So you have to recreate that environment, which isn't hard. Um, most of your synth your I'm sorry most of your natural fertilizers have many strains of bacteria many strains of fungus that help your plant also absorb the nutrients that it needs to grow and that's another pro to using natural fertilizers even though also I don't just, I don't think about um, eating anything from my plants at this point for my indoor plants I just rather even if I did it outdoors I would only use natural fertilizers I'm not gonna go into detail of what the bacteria and the fungus does. They just, long story short, they're, they're, if you got a bunch of bacteria, it's like bacillus, 
and fungus and you'll see me point them out in the fertilizer bottles that I have. They have like a few strains of bacteria, a few strains of fungus, and that's how you get your, your living soil to maintain itself and sustain it. So every time you're feeding your plant, you're also adding, you're also adding that bacteria element and that fungus element to the equation that brings your plant closer to home in your home. So it's it's like it's like a win-win and I love win-wins and it helps the plants grow. So what's better than that? The other thing that um, we also have to do, which isn't a bad thing, we have to offer our plants like other things that's on the periodic table, uh, magnesium, iron, uh, calcium. Calcium's a big thing. You're gonna see calcium in some of these fertilizers that I also have that I'm gonna show you shortly. Um, everything that we use also like calcium, we need calcium, we need potassium, we need phosphorus, we need iron, things like that. You also have to provide and you also have to make sure that's in your fertilizing. So what I do is also add Epsom salt. Epsom salt has magnesium and helps it uh, fight off different diseases and pests, things like that. And that's how all these things work together to help your plant grow. Now I'm gonna show you what I use as my arsenal for feeding plants. First, and, not, and in no particular order, but I use this thing right here. I'm just kinda, it's just kinda blurry, but this is Super Thrive. Uh, this does a few things that will benefit your plant. It has um, kelp, it has all types of, it, has, it looks kinda, and, and let me point one other thing out to you. If you're just new to fertilizing, be prepared for what it looks like. It's not bad, but it looks like muck and they're kinda all the same color and they're like fillers, so don't be too scared of it. Some may have an odor. The odor goes away, but I'll tell you how to, how I deal with that in the end of the video. But Super Thrive, good stuff here, has all these types of benefits. Um, Super Thrive, this helps for transplant shock. It helps build vigor, and it also adds vitamins and nutrients to your plants. And what's better than vitamins and nutrients? Another thing that I uh, like to use is uh, a Spoma organic start. I've been using this for a while and it's easy for me to use. I actually did another video about it because it has like a free pour thing and um, it's kind of convenient. But the Spoma Start has a guaranteed analysis of one, two, two. Now guaranteed analysis means you're guaranteed to have one, two, two. So the one is the nitrogen, the first two is the potassium, the second two is the phosphorus. So that's, you're guaranteed to have that and it's 1%, 2%, and 2%, so that's really low. So you're gonna have to, like I said, feed it regularly, probably every time you water, but it has a low chance of damaging your plant and a higher chance of promoting growth for your plant. And the other thing about Spoma Start is it has that, that bacteria content that I was talking about, the bacillus, and I believe the trichoderma, the trichoderma rhesii, and it's like CSC for you per milliliter. I'm not sure what all that is, but that's what you need in your soil. So get that, get that bacteria, that fungi in your soil to help your plants absorb the nutrients. So it's like you're getting the nitrogen, potassium, and the phosphorus, and you're also getting the bacteria and the fungi element to your soil. So this is why I use Espoma Start. I don't just use this, I use it um, in combination with the other ones I'm gonna show you. And I just picked this up from my local nursery um, on discount. And also, that's kind of what it looks like. It's brown, it's, it's not the prettiest thing, but it's for, it's a root booster. Now, when I saw this, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to get my roots boosted. So what's wrong with that? But the content was also interesting because when I saw it, it has a one, one, one for the MPK rating. So I'm like, what's going on with that? So I turn it around and I read the guaranteed analysis. It has 1% nitrogen and 1% um, phosphate and 1% potassium. But what's in it is uh, alfalfa meal, brewer's yeast, potassium, sulfate, rock, phosphate, and sea kelp. 
sea kelp is good i got that kelp is from the ocean has a lot of different nutrients in it and this is in this thing so it also has soybean meal but those are the things that i'm adding to the soil to help my plant grow and it boosts the roots so that that mixture must be directed to boosting your roots because like i said it's all even but we just want to bring all that to the equation just to get bigger plants so that's what i use to buy a root and then we're going to go to the next one all right, so I saw this also. It was uh, $16.99, but I had it was half off, so I couldn't resist. But I decided to try it because Biomarine. I'm like, it's another thing that I'm like, wow, this is this is crazy. Like, what are they doing? I can get cold processed squid, and what does it do? Because it has a two three one, so it has a two percent nitrogen rating, 3% potassium, 1% phosphorus. So this, I'm thinking it's also hitting the root system. And when I look at it, I'm just gonna go to the derived form. It's um, cold press enzymatically digested squid protein stabilized with phosphoric acid. I'm sure that does something to your plant. So I'm just gonna leave it at that. That's that Biomarine. Get that Biomarine in your system. Another one, another one. This was another one, cause I saw calcium. I picked it up. I forgot what I got it for, but I picked it up because it has a calcium in supplement. And uh, I know plants need calcium. So we're trying to hit all, we're trying to hit the plants with all these different equations. So like I said, we can bring them closer to home in our home. In the sea cow, you got 2% nitrogen, 3% calcium. Um, and it's derived from ammonia, nitrate, acophyllium, no dosum seaweed, and calcium gluc gluconate. So I guess the first most abundant form would probably be the first one would be the ammonium nitrate and then the last one would be the calcium calcium gluconate but we we know it's primarily for calcium so i'm adding calcium to your equation with the sea cow this is that good stuff so like i said i do low dose everything i just add little by little to each watering and i this is more liquidy it's not like kind of not like that thick stuff with the uh, biomarine or the uh, bio root and like i said i have all these these on my links in the description below if you wanted to check them out all right up next i got buried treasures liquid guano and it has a bat on it and if you don't know spanish or you don't know about the well if you don't know what guano is it's bat poop bat poop one of the i would say most richest types of fertilizers or one of them on earth um and I'm bringing that to my plants. And it's basically has a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.7 as far as for the phosphorus level. So it's higher on the all around end. And what it has for liquid um, guaranteed analysis has, like I said, 5% nitrogen, 5% phosphate, 5% potassium. And it's derived from bat guano, earthworm casting extract, seabird guano, and seaweed extract extract so that's some heavy stuff right there we got um earthworm castings that are natural um it's almost like uh, worm castings the same thing we just got it liquefied along with bat guano so we're hitting a lot of different extra enzymes and all types of stuff so we're really trying to bring that soil that it's original to into your plant pots with this and this is a more liquidy type of concentration doesn't smell that bad to be honest with you this is like one of the ones that don't smell at all that you would think if it's bat poop it probably smell like something but it's not but this is also what i use to uh, promote gold growth because that gives it that all around but phosphorus area nutrients for the npk level along with the other the the, the um the seaweed extract and once again we got seaweed we got kelp we're, we're adding that and that's like packed all types of different properties good stuff here now this is the last one of last fertilizer i'm going to talk about and it's like the fish fertilizer so if you see it has a 511 now this is the greatest number so it's five percent nitrogen and this would promote bigger foliage now i start off with this usually in the beginning of the spring early spring i start adding this to the equation because i want bigger foliage plants like my monstera downstairs it's the big i mean generally that's the size but i just want to give it just to see how big it can get and it's all natural so i just want to give it that along with the great lighting 
because also if you're not having a the other thing yes the most key thing if you don't have good lighting don't feed your plants a lot you need great lighting so it can absorb that the uh, the photosynthesis to make your roots grow a little bit bigger but if you don't have a lot of lighting it's not going to be able to they, they, there's a, a chink in the system or a break in the system so decrease your feeding if you don't have good lighting I've also researched that Nasty. but this one is derived from fish fertilizer I'm sure it's like they just blended fish together and um, this one also has a smell I'm not gonna lie it has a smell to it but we're gonna talk about how to offset that in just a second but um, this is good for indoor and outdoor plants and also you cut it you mix it with water and mix it well and dilute it so you can kind of offset that smell and, and it also is guaranteed yeah, it won't burn your plants because it's all natural and that's what we're looking for we don't want it to harm our plants at all and we want to do it at low doses so the Alaskan fish fertilizer is also what I add to the table as far as for my nitrogen content to get, get bigger plants, get bigger foliage. And like I also said, like Espen salt, add Espen salt. Uh, I use like, um, sometimes I use the non-scented Espen salt, like with peppermint. And that helps, gives it like a, a different scent to it to, to, to kind of equal out what, what those other ones are. And then also I add, uh, good old-fashioned cinnamon it's an antifungal to fight off fungus gnats um, at the ground soil because it's not going to leave um, it's going to even though you want fungus in your your plants it's just going to even out the the top layer um, because that's where the, the gnats usually leave their eggs and their larvae on the top layer so it's going to kind of decrease that level and make sure that's balanced out as you're adding fungus to the bottom of the soil but it also has a smell to it and it's also a growth promoter and a, um, uh, it's a stimulant, so it helps your plant grow also. So we're adding this to the equation also, along with the smell, because I, I kind of dust it and it makes the house smell great, makes the plant smell great. So that's how I kind of offset the feeding. But I usually do this when the uh, soil is dry and I just dust it so it just doesn't get all cakey and everything like that. I just wait for the, the top of the soil to get dry, then I add cinnamon to the equation. That is pretty much it, guys. Um, don't forget to check out my Instagram page at Gerard's Horticulture Culture. Let me know in the comment section below what you guys do for feeding your plants. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, let me know in the comment section below. I would love to know that my videos are hitting home and helping guys out or helping you plant people out and you new plant people. And like I said, don't forget to check out the links in my description below just to see the products that I use. This is a non-sponsored video. I'm just showing you what I use as far as for my plant growth and what I do to feed and care for my plants. And once again, I'm not a uh, plant expert. My house has different equations. Everybody's house is different. So you kind of have to kind of feel and kind of see what works for you. And I always kind of keep hearing the, the phrase what's less is always more so also when you like i said the key thing is use less fertilizers just to see how your plant takes and how your plant reacts my name is gerard this is gerard horticulture culture and keep growing now in the description with below <clears throat> now in <sighs> thou shalt fertilize do you fertilize do you feed your plants do you help them live their best life? In this video, I'm gonna be telling you why and the reasons why you should fertilize your plants because they need it. They need it. They need it.